Hello, Sir Jeff. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon to our viewers all over the country. I know um, we're still on the day two of our in virtual in-service training for teachers. And talaga sila dyan para, mag para medyo ma-relax pa tayo and uh, mas maging ready sa ating session for today. So today I'll be discussing to you uh, a new normal, the critical role of assessment in online learning. As we all know, uh, it's been a year since nag-declare ng lockdown sa ating in the Philippines and it's been a year kung saan nakat yung face-to-face -face, uh, delivery of instructions sa ating bansa and from that moment we try to innovate things we try to come up with uh, different learning modalities on how we can uh, continue in delivering quality education to our learners and isa po sa mga learning modalities is the online learning so since we're using online learning it is very important for us to assess or to know the level of understanding of our learners in an online learning platform. The critical basic education curriculum is the national curriculum for schools in the Philippines and forms the basis for all teaching and learning activities that teachers plan for learners in their classes. The teachers use the curriculum guides, teacher guide, teachers guide, learning resources, and their initiative to develop rich learner-centered activities for our learners. The continuing threat of the COVID-19 in the country and the basic work and the world brings about unprecedented challenges to basic education. And in preparation for school year 2020-2021, teachers and parents must adopt to alternative learning modalities to ensure that learners achieve essential curricular goals. And as stated in the DepEd Order Number 8, Series of 2015. Or the policy guidelines in classroom assessment for K-12 basic education program, the assessment should be used to inform and improve practices and promote learning outcomes. In assessing our learners, we are using this before, the DepEd Order Number 8, Series of 2015. In distance and blended learning environments, it is necessary to utilize alternative tools and strategies for assessing and supporting learning. Since we are now entering the distance and the blended learning environment, in 20, last October 2, 2020, the Department of Education issues the Department Order Number 31, Series of 2020, or the Interim Guidelines for Assessment and Grading in Light of the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan. So let's now focus our attention on assessment. When we talk about assessment, it is an ongoing process of identifying, gathering, organizing, and interpreting quantitative and qualitative information about what learners know and can do. So basically, we are conducting assessment right every after discussion. But we have this uh, to know we, we have this test intended to to measure what the learners can do. Misa binibigay natin to before the start of every semester or before the start of every quarter. It is an integral part of the curriculum implementation that allows teachers to track and measure learners' progress and to adjust their instructions accordingly. The results of the assessment will help our teachers to develop a well-designed assessment tool, a learning plan, or a delivery modality which will be suited to our learners. So kaya napakahalaga ng role ng assessment sa teaching and learning process. Let's have the principles of assessment. The first principle of assessment is assessment must be aligned with the curriculum. Assessment should focus on tracking learners' progress in relation to the content performance, to the content and performance standards in the curriculum along with the development of 21st century skills. As we all know, in today's era, we are trying to empower our learners to be, 20, uh, to, to, to be equipped with 21st century skills. Number two, assessment must be valid. Assessment should assess what the learners actually learn inside the classroom. Validity ensures that the assessment activities and assessment criteria accurately measures the extent to which learners develop the required competencies and meet the standards for their grade level. So sabi na, no, we need to assess 
yung learners natin based dun sa ano ang itinuro natin. Kasi minsan may mga assessment tayo na ginagawa na hindi naman aligned dun sa mga, sa mga competencies natin. Lagi natin tatandaan, dapat yung mga assessment na gagawin natin must be aligned sa ating MELCs or sa curriculum na ginagamit natin. For the third principle of assessment, assessment must be reliable and consistent. When we talk about reliability of assessment, it requires that clear and consistent processes be, follow, be followed in developing assessment activities. Because of this, it ensures that if you repeat an assessment activity with the same learners or conduct it with another time, if another teacher conducts it at the same activity with different learners, you should still... <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, hindi ko na hindi ko na kaya. Sorry, sorry. Okay. I would like to apologize for that. Medyo may may something lang. Number four, assessment must be fair and inclusive. Assessment activities should consider the learners' race, gender, learning needs, learning style, language of learning, abilities and disabilities, cultural background and socioeconomic activities. They must never exclude, take advantage, or disadvantage any individual or group of learners. So, di ba nga tayo, we, have, we are promoting this inclusive education, and sa elementary level, we have these learners with special educational needs, o yung LSEN, na tinatawag natin, na uh, we would like to inform everyone that at the start of third quarter for our Itulay, we will be having our SPED Itulay tutorial. So, abangan po natin ang SPED Itulay tutorial natin this March 22. For principle number five, assessment must be manageable for both learners and teachers. Learners need time to process new knowledge and practice new skills. This means that assessment should be developed and be implemented at appropriate times in the learning process. Assessment must be, must be manageable for teachers even in large classes, so that the evidences of new learning is gathered over time and in diverse ways. For principle number six, assessment must give learners a range of ways to demonstrate their achievements. So on our part as a teacher, we need to use range of assessment methods and activities to give learners many opportunities to develop, to, de to demonstrate their learning on a specific topic on a specific topic for number seven assessment must be part of a transparent ongoing where learners progress is monitored over time on this particular principle of assessment the teacher must use assessment criteria that are based on curriculum standards and competencies to gather evidences of learners achievements over time this criteria should be clear to the learners as they learn and before they carry out to the next activity. For the last principle of assessment, teachers and learners must use feedbacks effectively to improve learning and reflect on the teaching and learning process. Teachers give an ongoing and ex explicit feedback to learners throughout the learning, throughout the learning and assessment process, telling them what they have done well where they need to improve and how to improve. Teachers also use assessment data to reflect on, modify, and improve their teaching process. Diba, it is very important for us to have this feedback mechanism in a way that naiintindihan din natin bakit ganun yung performance ng ating mga learners, saan tayo medyo meron pagkukulang, ano yung kailangan natin i-improve sa ating, uh, the way we deliver our lesson. So, these are the eight principles of uh, assessment. And let's have this, the teaching and learning process. The teaching, the learning, and the assessment process. Before kasi we have the teaching and learning lang. So to assess the learning of our students, we need to perform different types of assessments using varied assessment tools. To reflect on... Okay. For the first one, identify the curriculum standards. 
So the curriculum standards, ito yung makikita natin sa ating most essential learning competencies. Ito yung mga may content standards. So we need to be mindful of that. The second one, develop the assessment criteria. We need to analyze the competencies to be assessed and unpack or expand them in a way that our, our students will be assessed on a specific topic alone. Kasi meron tayong mga competencies na talagang uh, medyo congested pa. So we need to unpack or we need to expand those uh, competencies. Identifying the assessment methods, it is very important for us to identify which assessment method will give learners the best chance to demonstrate their learning. Is it observation, talking to learners, or analyzing the product they make, or a test? So we have plenty of assessment methods that we can use, but let us take into consideration yung ano ba yung applicable sa ating learners. Next, design the assessment activities. After developing the assessment criteria, uh, identifying the assessment methods, we need to design our, our assessment activities. It is to assess the learner's knowledge on skills given with a specific learning competency. What task or task will, will you ask your learners to do or to demonstrate their learning? It is always, it is very important for us to remember that an activity does not always have to be a test or a written task. For number five, develop and undertake teaching and assessment activities. It is very important, lalo nang in K-12, learner-centered tayo. We need to plan learner-centered activities and explicit teaching design to help learners develop the required competencies. So, ito yung mga seven natin ito nakikita. You can see it on our activities in the, de in the detailed lesson plans or the daily lesson logs wherein our learners are engaged in the learning and as teachers, we give them time or chance to consolidate new knowledge and practice skills before formally assessing them. For number six, undertake the assessment activities. In, in undertaking the assessment activities, you need to inform the learners that you're assessing them and encourage them to do their best. Minsan kasi meron tayong mga binibitawang salita na akala natin uh, nakatutulong sa mga learners pero at some point medyo nadi-discourage na pala sila. Record evidences of learning. So when we talk about record of evidences of learning, we need to record the performance of each learner by selecting the most suitable recording method. We can have class checklist, um, observation grid, anecdotal record, and portfolios na ginagamit natin. As a teacher, we can also write comments on the checklist and on the learner's work that are linked to their assessment criteria. In writing our comments to that particular output on that part or the result of that particular assessment, nagkakaroon na kagad tayo ng immediate feedback dun sa naging performance ng ating mga learners. Make consistent judgment about learning. So use assessment criteria and rubrics objectively to determine the quality of each learner's work. So alam naman natin, oh, talagang sanay na tayo rito. Pag may mga pinapagawa tayo sa learners natin, automatic meron niyang rubrics o rubric. Yung rubric kasi will serve as a guide on how we are going to grade yung output ng ating mga learners. Another one, give immediate feedback. On this particular uh, step, use the assessment criteria to give explicit feedback to the learners about their work. You can give feedback orally or in writing, but do this immediately after the activity. So most of the time, tayo mga teachers, pag nagibigay tayo ng feedback natin, hindi natin naiisip yung mararamdaman ng learners natin. We need to give our feedback constructively kapag meron tayo nakitang medyo uh, medyo hindi maganda sa output ng mga learners natin. We can also give other things na kung saan may encourage natin yung mga learners natin to do their best and to exert more efforts.
And when we talk about uh, when we talk about assessment, it is inclusive in nature. When we talk about inclusivity, walang maiiwanan, lahat sama-sama. And a testament to that is the UN Convention on the Rights of a Person. Of a Persons with Disabilities, Article 24.2b. Ang sabi rito, persons with disabilities can access an inclusive quality and free primary education and secondary education on an equal basis with others in the communities in which they live. So talagang sa kagawaran ng edukasyon, lahat kasama. Lalo na yung mga students natin na may special needs. Ang napapansin ko, minsan nag-deploy na ng mga braille. Meron na tayong certain department na in charge for this, mga students with special needs. And we are developing different uh, equipments. We are providing different equipments platforms and other materials na pwedeng makatulong doon sa ating mga teachers teaching uh, teaching special education or teaching students with learners with special educational needs so ayan kaya sama-sama nga tayo walang maiiwan sa ating lahat Inclusive assessment, assessment should be inclusive and fair for all learners in class. Every learner must be in school or must have access to education through alternative delivery mode. Learners, including Muslim learners in Madrasa education system, must feel that they can participate freely and contribute to all aspects if school life, on school life. And... Let's have this assessment method. Assessment methods. We have different forms of assessment methods. Talking to learners. Teacher talk to and question learners to gain insights on their understanding and progress and to clarify their thinking. Analysis of learners' product. Teachers judge the quality of products created by learners according to agreed-upon criteria. So when we talk about agreed-upon criteria, ito yung rubric na ginagamit natin. And test. Teachers set quizzes to determine learners' ability to demonstrate mastery of a skill or knowledge and understanding of a content. So these are the assessment methods na pwede nating magawa at pwede nating gawin. And we, we have this quality criteria of assessment. The first one is validity. Quite simply indicates if the assessment type covers the learning objectives of the course in order to assess the validity of the assessment, reliability, transparency, and feasibility are key components to think in the case of validity. Number two, reliability. Number two is reliability. Number three is clarity. And number four is avoid susceptibility for technical problems. So these are the criteria for assessment. When deciding on the assessment method to use, consider these three questions. These are the, the, the things that we need to consider in designing our in deciding the assessment that we're going to use. First, what are you assessing? Is it knowledge, a skill, or both? Number two, which assessment method would best allow your learners to demonstrate what they have learned? And which method would make it easy for you to gather evidences of your learners' progress over time? So dito, we need to decide. Are we going to assess on the knowledge side or skills-based assessment ang gagawin natin. If nakuha na natin, identify na natin kung ano yung gagawin natin, we need to choose an appropriate assessment method. Let's always remember, hindi yan, isang hindi yan one assessment will fit every learners. Kasi ang learners natin, meron silang iba't ibang learning styles or learning acquisition. So hindi yan dapat isa para sa lahat. And after assessing, we need to gather data. That data will help us to decide whether yung bang 
competency na yon ay natutuhan na ng mga learners o we need to reteach o kailangan pa ng konti pang discussion about that. About that. Ayun ang gagawin natin. Ayan. So, on the recording methods, so I would like to apologize kung medyo nawawala-wala po ako. Hindi po internet problem yun. Um, for the recording methods, number one, class checklist. Sa class checklist, this outline the assessment activity and criteria and list all the learner's name. Use simple coding system to record how well each learner perform on each criterion. Leave spaces in the checklist for comments. So this is the class checklist. Number two, digital portfolios. These are collections of learners' works that show their efforts, achievements, and progress. Ito kasi yung digital portfolio, hindi na ito bago sa atin. Dati, gumagawa na rin tayo nito. Minsan, at naalala ko, nung panahon ko, magazine pa ang ginagamit ko. Doon ko nilalagay yung mga output ko, and then every... Every session, ang nangyayari ay pinapakita ko sa parents ko yun, and then do not attract yung mga performance nila. And during my time as a teacher, meron akong isang buong wall doon sa likod ng room ko, doon nakalagay lahat ng output ng mga learners ko. Mapa-arts yan, mat yan, basta lahat ng outputs nila nakalagay doon. Para during our, ano, during our PTA or release ng part, makikita ng mga parents nila. But now, different na eh. Kasi online learning tayo. So we need to use digital portfolios. At marami tayong avenue, marami tayong mga platforms na pwedeng gamitin to be able for us and for our learners to come up with a very good digital portfolios. Tatandaan natin, the purpose of this one is to measure and to assess yung mga naintindihan ng learners natin for a certain period of time. Next. Visual and audio records, audio recording, photographs, and video footages record, det record details that can be seen and heard and provide a reliable and lasting record of, achieve of achievements. Photographs can be included in portfolios or stored electronically. If used for purpose other than individual assessment, get permission from learners and parents to do this to ensure privacy and child protection. Tama naman po. If we're going to show a certain picture na may learners natin, kailangan mag-seek tayo ng parental consent because in DepEd, we are promoting for a child-friendly school. So, ayan yung mga goals natin. And number four, the most, uh, uh, ito yung pinaka-widely used uh, recording methods, which is the class record. So, feedback. Kalina, binanggit natin yan. Mahalaga ba ang feedback? Research showed that one of the most influential factors in improving learning is for learners to, re to receive clear and specific feedback while they are learning. Tulad na sinabi ko, we need to give feedback which is uh, constructive in nature. Kailangan hindi natin titignan yung mga learners natin o bibigyan ng feedback yung mga learners natin na madidiscourage sila to learn. Teachers use the assessment criteria and evidence from completed record sheets to give learners immediate and explicit feedback. So this is the importance of giving feedbacks to our learners. Lagi natin iisipin, we, started, we, we will start with, with the delivery of our lesson and we give them assessment. And after giving them assessment, we need to give them feedback. Kailangan inform sila kung ano ba yung naging performance nila and kung ano pa yung dapat nilang gawin. These are the guidelines on giving effective feedback. Guidelines on giving effective feedback. Give feedback as soon as possible after an assessment or activity. So, ayan yung dapat immediate talaga kasi minsan, 
Ito ha. Dati, meron tayong mga exam. May mga exam tayo na ginagawa. Dahil sa sobrang dami ng mga learners na sinacheck natin, hindi kagad natin na sinacheck ang lahat. So, kumbaga, pag lumabas yung resulta na almost half the class ay medyo got a failing grade, so kailangan i-reteach natin yun eh. Kailangan balikan natin siya. Unfortunately, I'm not saying na lahat. Minsan kasi, sa sobrang daming ginagawa, hindi kagad na chechekan. So, pumunta na tayo sa iba pang lesson without even thinking kung ano ba yung naging performance ng mga learners natin. Sa ngayon, with the help of different platforms, different assessment platforms na ginagamit natin, we can use Google Forms, Kahoot, and other uh, multimedia applications and platforms, we can gather an immediate feedback or we can generate uh, results immediately. Kung halimbawa, the last students, last student na mag-answer, automatically makapag-generate na yun ng, re ng report and then we can assess. Ma-assess kagad natin yung performance ng mga learners. Provide specific oral or written constructive feedback directly related to learners' performance. So ang focus natin is to give feedback on the performance of the learners, not on the other aspect ng pagkatao ng bata o ng ating mga learners. Provide feedback that, identif that identifies learners' strengths. So kahit na ano naging performance nila regardless of the result of the test, let's always, uh, let us try to treat our students in a way na hindi sila madadegrade, hindi sila wapanghihinaan ng loob. Ang mangyayari is they will be motivated enough to improve their performance. Highlights area for improvement, ayan. If we think na medyo nagka-problem si students on that particular assessment or on that particular topic, kailangan ibigay natin. So, siguro, these are the things that you need to do. To be able for you to do this, you need to do the following. So, kailangan ibigay natin yun. Saan pa kailangan mag-improve yung ating learners? Give hints on how to improve. Ayan. Mag-ibigay tayo ng mga tips and recommendations on paano pa may improve ng learners yung kanyang mga, yung kanyang ginagawa. Help learners give feedback to their peers using assessment criteria and rubrics during peer assessment activities. And provide learners with opportunities for self-reflection and self-assessment activities. So these are the guidelines on giving effective feedback to our learners. So ayan, ano ba si rubric? Bakit ba kailangan natin gumamit ng... Bakit ba natin kailangan gumamit ng rubrics na yan? We, we're using rubric are useful tools that help teachers make consistent judgments about the quality of learners' work. It is a scoring guide usually presented in a graphic format, typically as a grid. So this rubric will help us to assess our learners objectively following the given set of criteria and indicators na, na naka-anchor dun sa activity or sa output na gusto nating magawa. And just like any other assessment, yung rubric natin, hindi siya ano, custom fit siya. Kung anong gusto mong i-assess, you need to develop rubric for that. Kung anong performance ang gusto mong ipagawa, you need to create or to develop a unique rubric for that para talaga makita natin yung nagiging output ng ating mga learners. Next, it defines what is expected in a learning situation. So kasi nakalagay kasi rin, kapansinin natin, kadalasan, we are creating this rubric to sa rating scale na 1 to 4. Palibaw, 4. Demonstrates all the ganun-ganun. Kung baga, four, yun sa rating scale na 4, 3, 2, and 1 na yun, each each score on that, may sarili siyang indicator. And those indicators na nakalagay doon sa rubric natin, ay yun yung expected output natin sa ating mga learners. So kaya napakahalaga na makapag-develop tayo ng isang maayos at comprehensive na rubric in assessing the output or the performance of our learners on a certain period of time. It gives meaning to learners of learners' level of performance on a tech, on an authentic assessment task, and 
Rubric answer three questions. What do we want learners to know and be able to do? How well do we want learners to know and be able to apply or use a skill in a concept? And how will teachers and other scholars know when a learner knows a concept and does an activity well? So ito yung mga dapat natin isipin in creating our rubrics. Or rubric. Yung rubric ba yun? Ina-answer na ba yung mga question na yan? Ito yung mga considerations that we need to take. We need to remember in creating or crafting our rubric. Advantages. What are the advantages of using a rubric? Number one, it allows assessment to be more objective and consistent because the criteria are in a specific term. What do we mean on a specific term? For example, if we want to, to, to assess the creativity of our learners, we will have creativity as the main focus, and then we have four indicators. We have four as the highest, three, two, and one. Yung mga indicators na yon, naka-level siya. For example, it, it achieves the following indicators, four. Pag lack one indicators, uh, three. Pag nawawala yung two to three indicators, two. Pag totally wala do, hindi mo nakita yung mga indicators na yon, one. So, ganun tayo gumawa ng rubric. Number two, clearly show learners how their work will be evaluated and what they can expect from this. In establishing the key criteria or the key pointers on a rubric, malalaman kagad ng learners, eto pala yung inaasahan ni teacher. Eto pala yung magiging output dapat natin. And number three, promote learners' awareness of the criteria to use in assessing their peers' performance. Bakit in assessing their peers' performance? Tandaan natin, with, with, with the technology that we have right now, pwede pa rin magkaroon ng online reporting. Ayan, yung lagi natin ginagawa dati. Online reporting. We have Google Workspace, yung mga Google Slides, Google Docs, na kung saan, basta nakashare lang yung slides na yun sa mga learners natin, yung mga learners natin pwede mag-collaborate, pwede mag-comment, and pwede nilang ma-assess yung performance nila. So, dapat yung rubric natin ay inform dapat yung mga learners at alam nila kung ano yung content nun. Number four, provide useful feedback regarding the effectiveness of instruction. So, these are the advantages of using a rubric. So, ito yung mga sample summative assessment tools that qualify as performance tasks in online learning. This is yung attachment ito. Isa ito sa mga kasama ron sa interim guidelines na inisyo ng DEPED or the DEPED Order Number 30 Series of 2020. So, ano-ano ba yan? So, we have here four languages or four languages, ito yung mga English or Filipino. It is divided into three if we are trying to assess written outputs, products, or performance tasks. So, for written outputs, we have blogs, essays, e-journals. For products, we have YouTube campaign, case studies published through Adobe Acrobat and e-collages. Performance tasks, so ayan ha. Ito yung mga suggested lang naman. Summative, summative assessment tools. Again, ito ay taken doon sa ating uh, interim guidelines on assessing learners po ngayong pandemic format. Ayan. Data recording and analysis using Google Forms, geometric and, statist and statistical analysis using Stata or Alex, graphs, charts, or maps using Microsoft Excel or Sheets. So these are the things that we need to consider or these are the uh, uh, suggested summative assessment tools na pwede nating ibigay sa ating mga learners. For science, ayan, concept maps, data recording, Laboratory reports and video documentation, reaction or reflection papers, survey using Google Forms for products, investigatory projects, e-models and diagram construction, prototype building with video demonstration and research paper. For performance tasks, at yung mga suggested natin, we have seven assessment tools. I'll not discuss it one by one kasi alam ko naman, all of us are familiar with with all the things na nandito, with all the summative assessment tools uh, suggested uh, suggested by Deputy Order Number 30 po ito yata, series of 2020. 
And for araling panlipunan, eto yung mga suggest, suggested summative assessment tools. Another one we have for music, arts, and PE. So ako papansin natin, encompassing siya. Lahat ng mga learners natin, lahat ng grade levels natin ay nandyan. For edukasyon sa pagkapakatao, we have the following, blogs, essays, journal writing, reaction reflection paper, for products, argument analysis, expressing feelings and ideas through art activities, for performance tasks, issue awareness campaign via YouTube, presentation and multimedia presentation, personal action plans, and situation analysis o pagsusuri ng sitwasyon. For our education sa pantahan at pangkabuhayan or technology and livelihood education, blog essays, diagrams, charts and models, work designs and plans for products, ito yung mga kailangan nating, mga pwede nating ibigay sa ating mga learners. I know it's been a year at marami na tayong at trainings na inatendan, marami na tayong in-empower natin yung sarili natin. Paano ba natin may ma-overcome itong mga e-assessment uh, challenges natin with our learners? The first thing that we need to do is through instructional design. Integrating the e-assessment into the entire le learning process as part of the course design, it is very important to measure how people learn and not just what they have learned. It is an ongoing process that should be assessed continuously. And instructional design can help teachers to plan how and when to do a particular assessment. This instructional design can also help teachers choose the right assessment methods, strategies, and technologies to enhance teaching and learning process. Variety of methods. As a teacher, we need to use different assessment methods and activities to measure different processes and outcomes coming from different learning styles such as multiple choice question, e-portfolio assessment, concept maps or personal response systems, online role plays, activity-based scenarios, judge mathematical, uh, mathematical expression, and online discussion. The third one, technologies enhance assessments. We need to use ICT to follow up learning process. We need to build tools to monitor and support and to assess a large number of students. Design scales and rubrics to be used as self-assessment, peer review, and teacher evaluation. We need to select technologies that support alternative assessment strategies and allow evidences of higher level learning to be collected. And for the last, I for the fourth one, evidence-based learning. Learners need substantial, regular, and meaningful feedback and e-assessment strategies over a systematic format for providing this. The feedback can be personalized and provided by different actors. Feedbacks should be used to improve learning and not given as final activity. And for the last one, we have the feedback and feed forward. And those we, and the things that we need to consider in an online assessment. Okay, I think mga dapat natin consider desktop and sharing, desktop sharing and video monitoring, randomized individual time assessment tests, and secure and assessment administration standards. So these are some safety precautions na pwede natin gamitin para maging valid o maging makatotohanan yung magiging assessment natin sa ating mga learners. And sabi nga rito, let's always remember na ang assessment, we're using assessment not to judge our learners but to help them improve on a particular on a particular topics or discussion na hindi niya na iintindihan or medyo nahihirapan sila. And at the end of the day, effective teachers recognize the importance of engaging their students in learning. This is why it is necessary to implement 
to implement relevant technologies for assessment to make learning applicable to modern students who are becoming more digital and competence-based to meet the demand for the future jobs. And teacher training is very important in meeting the challenges imposed by this pandemic. Again, I am your resource speaker this afternoon about the critical role of assessment in online learning, your educational technology specialist and DepEd TV project lead, Mr. Salvador I. Manansala I. Maraming maraming salamat po and I hope may meron akong konti na impart na knowledge sa inyo about the role of assessment in online learning. Thank you very much and God bless us all. Okay, so isang mapagpalang hapon po sa lahat ng ating mga viewers for this afternoon. So, So this is the last session for today's virtual inset. And I will be discussing to you the Open Educational Resources Readiness Review Criteria. So kung meron po tayong mga self-learning materials and we wanted it to be converted into ebook, makakatulong po sa atin ang session na ito. So, our terminal objective, at the end of the session, the participants will be able to evaluate the readiness of a self-learning material for conversion to ebook. And our enabling objectives are the following. First, discuss the OER readiness review criteria. So, we need to consider the eight criteria which will be discussed later on para pumasa ang ating mga SLMs at ma-convert siya into ebook. The second one, reflect how the OER project criteria compares with DepEd LRMDS Educational Soundness General Evaluation Criteria and LRMDS Evaluation, sh evaluation Sheet for Non-Print Resources. We will also see the alignment of this OER criteria at LRMDS. And lastly, we are going to rate the potential effectiveness of a self-learning material. So I know teachers na tayo ay nagsulat ng ating mga self-learning materials na gagamitin ng ating mga students. So um, the pandemic or etong coronavirus na ito po, it has become a global health issue. And it has had a great impact sa ating po education. Up to this date, wala pa pong face-to-face -face classes na nangyayari sa ating bansa. So with that, our department, the Department of Education, introduced the different learning modalities. And I know we are familiar of those modalities, which includes online learning, modular distance learning, the blended learning, and of course, the radio-based and TV-based instruction. Ayan. So, last year, October 2020 po, um, ang kagawaran ng edukasyon together with the UNICEF and Intelimina conducted a training workshop for the DepEd UNICEF OER ebook or ebook development project. So, ang training na ito po nahati sa dalawang module. Yung first module, um, they trained us how to evaluate the self-learning materials. So, yun nga po yung i-discuss natin, the eight criteria. And yung second module po is the ebook development. After evaluating those self-learning materials, pag pumasa po siya sa evaluation, then i-convert po siya sa... And we have um, yung ibang SLM spot na na-evaluate ay nasa DepEd Commons na po at pwede na pong i-access ng ating mga students and teachers. Okay, so we have OER or Open Educational Resources. What are this OER? I know naririnig po natin ito. These are teaching, learning, and research materials in any medium, pwede po siyang digital, that reside in the public domain or have been released under an open license 
that permits no post access, use, adaptation, and redistribution by others with no or limited restrictions. In short po, libre na gamitin ng guro at ng estudyante ang mga materials na nasa public domain or yung mga open educational resources natin. So, the DepEd has its open educational um, resource uh, materials or tools. So, meron DepEd OER, which focuses on the ICT-assisted teaching and ICT-assisted learning, whereas the creation of yung mga tinatawag po nating contextualized learning materials is made possible for us to deliver quality, accessible, relevant, and liberating education for all. So every Saturday po this March, my series po training na ginagawa ang EdTech Unit regarding basic OER. And dito po, nadidiscuss yung ibang um, DepEd OER tools na pwedeng gamitin ni teacher. And these tools include, meron po tayong Kiwix. And this Kiwix is an offline version of Wikipedia 2016, which is hindi po siya pwedeng i-edit. Another, Meron din po tayo nung um, Kulibre. Um, this Kulibre, um, it is a Python-enabled software na kung saan it houses um, numerous OER materials. And ang maganda po dito, we can use this offline. So, pwedeng-pwede po siya sa remote places. Okay. Pangatlo na tool ng OER sa ating bansa, we are using the Moodle, so the learning management system, which allows us to evaluate or assess um, both teachers and learners offline. Because LMS po ang ginagamit natin sa ating training to assess um, our participants. Pang-apat po, we also have the Course Lab 2.4. So sa Course Lab na ito, you can create um, presentations interactive presentations na pwede pong gamitin ng ating mga estudyante. At ito yung gustong-gusto kong OER tool naman na ginagamit ko sa aking klase, which is the Wondershare Quiz Creator. It is uh, a quizzing application wherein you can make um, your quizzes interactive. Yung simpleng multiple choice, magiging interactive po siya kapag nilagay natin siya sa Wondershare Quiz Creator. So, if you want to learn this OER uh, materials na ginagamit po ng DepEd, manood po kayo every Saturday this March. Uh, may series po ginagawa na basic OER training. Okay po? So, we have now the Open Educational Resource Readiness Review Criteria. So, ito yung mga kailangan um, isaalang-alang na isang guro pag siya ay magsusulat ng SLM at ang target niya ay i-convert ito into ebook. First, it is the degree of alignment to MELC. I know every one of us familiar tayo sa most essential learning competencies na tinatawag natin. And may dalawang standards tayo na dapat pakatandaan pagdating sa mail. Of course, the content and the performance standard. Okay. For the second criteria, we have the nature of license. So yung mga naunang nag-speak po sa akin, um, dun kanina sa video editing, na-discuss nila ang copyright issues, which is very important pag tayo ay nagsusulat ng ating SLM. So, we will be discussing this um, mamaya po. Mas uh, palalawakin natin yung kaalaman natin regarding this nature of license. Okay, for the third one, we have the quality of explanation of the subject matter. Pang-apat po, cultural relevance. It is very important for us na pag tayo ay nagsusulat ng ating SLMs or ng Kahit anong lesson po natin, may integration po tayo ng culture. The fifth one, utility of materials designed to support teaching. 
Pang anim po, the quality of assessment, which is kadi discuss lang ni Sir Salvador. The quality of exercises, may assessment na may exercises pa. So if you can observe our SLMs, iba yung assessment natin sa mga exercises na pinapresent po natin sa ating mga materials. And lastly, the opportunities for deeper learning. So dito po matatak na tinatawag natin for the collaboration, the critical thinking skills, the communication, and the creativity skills of our learners. Okay. So, let's see. My alignment ba yung OER criteria sa DepEd LRMDS? Yes, meron po. Hindi siya basta-basta ginawa. Inalign na din siya sa ating DepEd LRMDS. So, the table below reflects how the OER project criteria compares with the DepEd LRMDS Educational Soundness General Evaluation Criteria and LRMDS Evaluation Sheet for Nonprint Resources. Okay, so let's have the first criteria. So the first criteria under OER is the alignment with the most essential learning competencies. So, this criteria is aligned to LRMDS Evaluation Criteria number 8, which states that it reflects the profile of the target learner or users. So, when we write our SLMs, pag po tayo ay gumawa ng ating SLM, it is very important for us to consider who are our learners. We have different um, levels of our, grade levels of our learners. So, napakahalaga po na i-consider po natin yung bagay na yun. And for the non-print resources, it is aligned to factor one, which is content. Okay, another alignment for OER criteria one alignment with MELCS is LRMDS criteria 11. This uh Criteria, sabi po niya, the target learners or users are clearly identified. So, kailangan alam mo ano yung academic level ng estudyante mo. Saan siya nabibilang? Nasa average ba siya? Okay, so yun po, kailangan alam natin. Another is, you must also know their technical skills. Saan magaling yung estudyante mo? Magaling ba siya sa pag-awit? Magaling ba siya sa pagguhit? Magaling ba siya sa, matima, sa um, paggawa ng kanta? Okay, so kailangan alam mo yung technical skills na kaya, kayang gawin ng iyong mag-aaral. And of course, mahalaga din na alam mo ang demographic address ng iyong learners. And... It is also aligned to criteria 14, which is the prerequisite knowledge skills are clearly identified. Okay, so kailangan alam mo kung ano yung prior knowledge ng student sa lesson na pinapresent mo sa kanya. For example, your lesson is about balancing equation and um, chemical reaction. So kailangan... Ang prerequisite skill doon, alam dapat ng estudyante mo ang topic na naming compounds. So, kailangan yun yung mga tinitignan po natin pag tayo ay gumagawa ng ating um, SLMs under this criteria alignment with the most essential learning competencies. Okay, so again, under non-print resources, naka-align po siya sa factor 1 which is content. Okay po. So, for our second criteria, which is the quality of explanation. So, this criteria, OER criteria, is aligned to LRMDS criteria 1, criteria 2, criteria 3, 4, 5, and 16. Okay, let's have first criteria 1. Content is accurate. Of course, it is very important for us that the ideas presented sa atin pong SLMs ay totoo. It is true and correct. Okay, so lagi po natin pakatatandaan yun. The second one, it supports learners' deepening of knowledge. So, 
expectation doon sa self-learning materials nato natin, it will broaden the understanding of our learners in a given topic. And for criteria three, presents controversial issues with balance and fairness and in accordance with the DepEd curriculum policies. For example, you will present a social issue in your class, for example, the LGBT community. So in presenting that issue, always remember na dapat may equality sa both parties. So hindi po tayo dapat bias and of course, aligned pa rin siya sa DepEd curriculum policies. Okay, so for LRMDS non-print resources, it is aligned to factor one content, factor three, presentation and organization, and factor four, accuracy and up-to-datedness of information. So from time to time, let's check the to updated po, po ba yung mga information na binibigay natin sa ating mga learners. Okay, another um, alignment to LRMDS criteria is criteria 4, 5, and 16. Okay, 4 and 5 may, major related po ito. So for 4, uses language and symbols of the content to main. And for 5, correct and appropriate use of terms and expressions, symbols and notations, diagrammatic representation, and graphical representation. So what does this mean? It means na kung tayo po ay maglalagay sa, for example, sa language na gagamitin natin, sa symbols na i-represent natin, sa diagrams as well as sa graphics na i-represent po natin, kailangan alam natin yung level, grade level, or yung um, level ng student natin. So, Hindi siya ganun kasimple para sa grade level niya at hindi din kahirap para sa grade level niya. So, tamang-tama lang para sa kanilang grade level and also as well as their academic levels. And last po is the LRMDS criteria number 16. So, we provide clear instructions. So, of course, kailangan when we give instructions or directions to our learners, the purpose, the process, as well as the intended outcome, kailangan nadidiscuss po natin yun ng mabuti sa ating mga learners. So, same lang po siya sa non-print resources criteria. So, factor 1, 3, and factor 4. So, in terms of cultural relevance naman po, so, Cultural relevance criteria under OER is aligned to LRMDS evaluation criteria number 22. So it says there, equivalent or alternative access to information is available for learners with diverse needs. So sa isang klase po, alam natin yan, diverse po ang ating mga learners. Magkakaiba po yan. So first, Identical content or activity is presented in different modes. For example, you present the same activities but using diverse modes or ibat ibang modes. Halimbawa, sa isang activity, you will use the paper and pen. The other activity, you will integrate technology. Okay? For the second one, different activities that achieve the same learning outcome are available so you can present various activities but accomplishing the same learning objective meaning iba iba yung activities na present mo pero iisa lang yung tina-target nating objective so para siyang sa degree of difficulty lang nagkaka iba so di ba sa mga learning activities natin gumagawa tayo ng mga easy activities, ng mga average activities, and challenging activities. So, for the LRMDS non-print resources, it is aligned to factor one, which is content. Okay? And, susunod po na criteria sa OER, we have the utility of materials designed to support teaching. 
So this is aligned to criteria, LRMDS criteria number six. States that we utilize differentiated instruction. So Madami researches and Nagsasabe that differentiated instruction is effective in delivering our lesson. So um, you design instruction in order for you to meet the individual needs of your learners. You can group your learners based kung saan sila magaling. Or you group, you differentiate the instruction, magkakasama yung mga um, magagaling sa music, magkakasama yung magagaling sa, sa language. Okay, so that's differentiating instruction. And for the LRMDS criteria 7, uses content in ways that are real life. Okay, so of course, kailangan po realistic within the context of the learner yung mga nilalagay natin sa ating self-learning materials. For criteria 10, LRMDS criteria 10, Objectives are made explicit to learners and users. Gaya po nung ginawa ko kanina, I presented to you the objectives. So, kailangan, we pres oh, objectives are presented clearly to our learners para hindi po sila nawawala. Then, we have criteria, LRMDS criteria 18. The learning resource can be accessed by learners or users. Kagaya po ng ating DepEd ng ating DepEd TV. So, pwede siyang i-access ng ating mga estudyante. And last for criteria under utility of materials designed to support teaching, the resource may not require teacher facilitator intervention. So, hindi na po kailangan mag gumawa pa ng intervention ni teacher dun sa gagawin natin self-learning. Material And this criteria is aligned to LRMDS Nonprint Resources Factor 3, which is presentation and organization. Next, for our quality of assessment criteria under OER, so ito na po yung sinabi ni Sir Salvador kanina. So LRMDS evaluation criteria is aligned to um, Criteria number 13 provides an opportunity for learners, users to obtain feedback. So, napakahalaga po na mag-provide tayo ng feedback sa ating mga learners. So, it is important to give comments sa output ng ating mga estudyante. Kahit nasa pandemic po tayo, alam ko, we are giving feedback to our learners. Maparaan ng teacher. So, we have our group chat na pwede natin isend o kaya i-PM sa kanila yung um, feedback natin sa mga ginawa nila. Or since high school po kasi ako, minsan nakakapasok ang mga estudyante para kumuha. So doon, nagkakaroon ng feedbacking. Okay? And for the quality of exercises, okay, o kaya naman dun sa feedbacking, pwede i sabihin na natin sa parent niya or kung sino mang kukuha ng kanyang module yung ating feedback. Okay, so let's have the quality of exercises. So we have the LRMDS criteria number 11. The target learners or users are clearly identified. So, sabi ko nga kanina, alam mo dapat yung academic level ng bata. Alam mo yung technical ng bata, tsaka yung kanyang demographic address. Para alam mo kung hanggang saan lang yung exercise na ibibigay mo sa kanya. And we also have criteria 12. Content is structured to scaffold learning. So, it tinatawag natin scaffolding, which is providing support to our learners throughout the lesson. So, magbibigay tayo ng support sa ating mga learners sa, sa lessons na pinapresent po natin sa kanila. And for criteria 17, learning and information design is intuitive. For example po, may binigay tayong exercise. So the user knows what to do and how to do it. So mahalaga po yun. Kailangan alam niya kung anong gagawin niya at kung paano ang gagawin niya sa binigay mong exercise. So kailangan maging clear tayo sa pagbibigay ng instruction sa ating pong mga learners. 
Okay, and for the last two criteria, the nature of license and the opportunities for deeper learning. So kung papansinin po ninyo, wala siyang alignment sa ating LR, DepEd LRMDS criteria. But it, this doesn't mean na hindi po kailangan i-consider ang criteria na ito. So we need to consider this criteria para pumasa po tayo sa evaluation at ma-convert natin yung ating SLMs into e-book. Okay po. So, let's now have the rubrics for the OER readiness review criteria. So, okay. This rubrics will be used to rate the potential effectiveness of our self-learning materials. Each rubric should be scored independently of the others using the following five scores that describe the levels of potential quality, usefulness, or alignment to standards. So, meron po tayo limang um, rate na pwedeng makuha pag um, evaluate yung ating self-learning materials. We have four for superior, three for strong, two for limited, one for weak, and zero which is not useful. Of course, ang target na natin if we are going to write our SLMs ay yung makuha natin yung 4 na rating or the superior. Kasi pag 4 po yung rating natin, i-convert natin agad yan sa ebook. So pag strong naman, may medyo konti lang na babaguhin. Pero kapag 2, 1, and 0, so kailangan po natin palitan ang major parts ng ating self-learning materials. Okay, so isa-isahin po natin. Criteria 1, alignment to belt or the most essential learning competencies. So sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, uh, may dalawang bagay na isa sa alang-alang tayo pag giyawa natin ang criteria na ito sa ating self-learning materials. We consider the content and the performance standards. Okay. Halimbawa, your standard is for you to discuss what is evolution. And for your performance standard, you are going to um, gagawa ng poster ang mga estudyante. So, yun dapat, doon dapat naglalaro yung nilalaman ng ating self-learning material doon sa content at performance standards na nabanggit ko. Okay. Para magkaroon po tayo ng rating na 4, ano yung mga dapat nating e-consider na indicators? Okay. So, we have two indicators na kailangang mamit. First, all of the content and performance standards in the most essential learning competencies are completely addressed by the self-learning material. So, natakal mo dapat yung content at performance standard. The second one, the content and performance expectations of the milk are the focus of the SLM. So, yun po yung kailangan mamit na indicator para ang rating mo ay 4. And for a rating of 3, SLM has a strong alignment for either one of the two reasons. Pwedeng Minor elements of the milk are not addressed in the object or objective or yung content sa performance standard mo, minor lang yung alignment sa SLM. So, dapat naka-align talaga yung content and performance standards po natin. Okay, a rating of 2 or limited. If a significant part of the content or performance expectations of milk is not addressed in the object or objective, but there is fidelity to the part of part it does cover. So limited po yung natakal natin sa content and performance standard. Then a rating of 1 naman kapag minimal lamang yung natakal natin sa content and performance standard. And a rating of zero, ang sakit naman kung ang rating ng um, SLM mo ay zero. So, not useful kung hindi man lang siya nag-match sa content 
and performance standards. So, take note po, kailangan kung gagawa tayo ng SLM, basahin na natin yung indicators for criteria 4 para makuha natin or ma-evaluate natin, uh, ma Ma convert natin agad yung ating SLMs into ebook. So that's for criteria one, alignment to milk. Let's have criteria two or nature of license. Okay, dun sa video editing kanina, may mga nagtano kung saan daw sila kukuha ng mga videos, sa mga images para maiwasan ang copyright issues. So let's see. It resides in the public domain or have been released under an open license that permits no cost access, use, adaptation, and redistribution by others with no or limited restrictions. Ito po kanina yung binanggit ko sa open educational resources. Or, meron po tayong other option. The use of creative commons licenses. So, acceptable din po ang paggamit natin ng Creative Commons licenses. So, kailangan po natin ng images sa Google, hindi tayo basta-basta kumukuha ng images doon. Hanapin po natin yung mga nasa Creative Commons licenses para maiwasan natin ang copyright issue. Okay? So, ngayon, kung wala doon yung image na gusto mo, okay, maparaan tayo, maghanap ka ng kaibigan na magaling mag-illustrate. Kasi, we, nung nag-convert po ako ng e-book, nag-survive ako sa mga kaibigan kasi tinulungan po nila ako sa illustration. So, may mga kaibigan akong nag-i-illustrate for my e-book or sa aking SLMs. Ngayon, kung sa video naman, pwede po tayong kumuha sa YouTube, pero dapat nasa audio library yung mga gagamitin po natin para wala ulit copyright issues. Ngayon, kung wala doon yung mga audio or videos na gusto natin, pwede naman tayong mag-video ulit. Pwede i-video mo yung sarili mo, maghanap ka ng pwede mong i-video, pero kung estudyante yan, kailangan pa rin ng parent consent kung mag-video ka ng estudyante. Okay. So, Ano ba yung mga dapat isa alang alang para yung ating um, rating ay maging 4 under nature of license? Para maging superior. So, kailangan nasa public domain. So, pag sinabi natin public domain, the creative materials are not protected by intellectual property laws, gagaya ng copyright, ng trademark, or ng patent laws na tinatawag po natin. The public owns the materials. Kagaya po ng Creative Commons. Okay? The public owns the materials. Kasi pag sinabi po natin Creative Commons, it allows educators to freely and legally share their work. So, yun po kapag nasa Creative Commons licenses tayo. So, the public owns these um, works Hindi po siya pag-aari ng individual author or na kahit sino mang artist. So, pag nasa public domain siya, anyone can use a public domain work without obtaining permission to own sa may-ari. But take note, we cannot own the material. Okay po? So, kahit hindi tayo mag-ask ng permission as long as we do not own the material. Next. Strong or three, creative commons attribution. So it must give appropriate credit. Minsan, pag gumagawa tayo ng SLM, si ba, naglalagay tayo ng photo credits too. Tapos, you insert the link. And um, you also indicate kung mga may binago ka, di ba? Modified from. Then, nilalagay natin yung link or kung ano ma, kung saan man natin kinuha yung ating um, nilagay na illustration or whatever na nilalagay po natin sa ating mga self-learning materials. Okay? And a rating of two or limited creative commons, non-commercial or share alike from the word non-commercial, it cannot be used commercially. And a rating of one or weak creative commons or no derivative work. 
So if you remix, transform, or build upon the material, you may not distribute the modified material. So kung nag-remix po tayo ng material, so hindi po natin siya pwedeng i-distribute. And zero, full copyright. Okay, so ito po yung iiwasan natin, copyright issues. Okay, so that's four criteria to nature of license. Let's proceed to the third criteria. The quality of explanation of the subject matter. This is how thoroughly that subject matter is explained or how do you reveal, uh, how the subject matter is revealed in the self-learning material. So, paano mo ba uh, pina inatake yung lesson, yung subject matter mo? sa iyong self-learning material. Okay, a rating of four will be given to you if the following indicators are met. Number one, the SLM provides comprehensive information. So, kailangan na iintindihan ng target audience natin yung mga nilalagay nating data sa ating SLMs. Second, the SLM corrects important associated concepts within the subject matter. What does it mean? Halimbawa po, ang lesson natin is about uh, multi-digit addition. So, kailangan ma-associate mo yung topic na yun, um, sa makonect mo yung topic na yun sa concept within the subject matter. The subject matter is mathematics. So, ang topic mo is multi-digit um, addition. So, pwede mo siyang i-associate sa topic na place value. Pag nag-add sila ng milyon, mga ganon. So, kaila, di ba dapat alam nila na ang ones and hundreds ganito ay magkakatapat? So, yun po yung ibig sabihin nung indicator number two. Kailangan makunek natin or may association ng concepts within the subject matter. Third, the SLM does not need to be augmented with additional explanation or materials. So, yung SLM lang na ibibigay mo, sapat na para maunawaan ng bata kung ano yung objective ng ating lesson. Okay, a rating of three will be given if SLM explains the, few, the subject matter in a way that makes skills, procedures, concepts, and or information understandable. It falls short of superior in that it does not make connections among important associated concepts within the subject matter. Gaya no hali, example ko kanina, multi-digit um, addition. So pag hindi mo siya na-associate sa isang topic within the subject matter, kagaya ng place value, then ang rating mo na lang doon ay 3 or strong. Okay, for a rating of 2, if your SLM explains the subject matter correctly, pero limited yung pagkaka-explain mo sa um, content ng iyong self-learning material. A rating of 1, if the explanations are confusing or it contains error. So, dapat hindi nakakalito yung mga explanations po natin sa ating mga Estudyante, dapat klaro. And zero, or it is not useful if it will not help the learner understand the subject matter. Okay. So that's for criteria three. Let's have the next criteria, cultural relevance. So sa cultural relevance, may tinatawag po tayong CRT. What is this CRT? The culturally relevant teaching which means a pedagogy that empowers students intellectually, socially, emotionally, and politically by using cultural reference to impart knowledge, skills, and attitudes. Anong ibig sabihin pag sinabi natin cultural reference? So this pertains to, you are going to, ito yung sinasabi natin, to know what they do not know. So for example, um, you will integrate um, religion, the culture of different religion sa ating bansa. So, of course, hindi dahil, uh, of course, we need to discuss the different cultures ng 
iba't ibang religion na meron tayo sa ating bansa, the culture of Muslims, Christians, whatever um, religion we have. So, i-discuss natin yun kasi there are students na hindi alam kung anong kultura ng isang religion. So, that's the time na pumapasok doon yung tinatawag natin to know what they do not know. But take note, my dear um, viewers, participants, kailangan na ma-maintain ang respeto ng mga estudyante sa culture ng bawat isa. So, let, uh, ang ibig sabihin lang po nun, we are empowering our students um, to become, uh, to maintain the integrity of the culture while they are academically succeeding. So, ulitin ko po, we are empowering our students to maintain culture integrity while they are succeeding. Pag tayo po ay nag integrate ng culture sa ating mga self-learning materials. And this CRT has three characteristics. Ano-ano po yung mga yon? The first one, it's validating and affirming. Sabi ko nga kanina, diverse ang learners natin. So, ibig sabihin kanya-kanya ng culture yan. So, it's validating and affirming. If it acknowledges that our learners have diverse cultures. Second, comprehensive. It is comprehensive if it uses um, cultural resources to teach the knowledge, the skills, the values, and attitudes of our learners. And it's multidimensional naman po if it applies multicultural theory to the classroom environment, the teaching methods, and evaluation. So that's for cultural relevance. So how will you get a rating of four under this criteria? Superior kapag na-meet mo yung tatlong characteristics. Validating and affirming, comprehensive, multi-dimensional. Okay. Three naman kapag dalawa lang doon sa CRT characteristics ang na mo. Two, kapag iisa sa CRT characteristics. One, kapag it appears to be designed to provide some of the CRT characteristics. So, may natakal ka paunti-unti sa CRT characteristics. And zero, if it does not conform to CRT. So, kahit isa doon, wala kang na-meet sa ating um, characteristics ng ating CRT. Okay po? So let's have criteria five, the utility of materials designed to support teaching. So this is the potential utility of the SLM at the intended grade level for the majority of teachers. So this is designed or dito po lumalabas or dito na ipapakita ni teacher paano niya plinano at paano niya iprepresent yung kanyang subject matter. Di po ba nung face-to-face -face, meron tayong lesson planning na ginagawa especially pag magpapak, uh, magkakaroon tayo ng classroom observation. So may lesson planning tayo ginagawa. So this is under criteria 5. How will I get a rating 4 or superior? So you have three indicators. One, provides materials that are comprehensive and easy to understand and use. Pangalawa po, it includes suggestions for ways to use the material with a variety of learners. And last indicator, all objects and all components are provided and function as intended and described. Okay, paano natin mamimit ito? For example, in your, um, in your SLM, nakapresent po doon yung time frame. So, di ba nagpa-plano po tayo? So, mahalaga na meron yung time. Sa lesson plan natin, di ba minsan nilalagay natin, uh, for my review, I will allot 5 minutes. For, for my discussion, 20 minutes. For my assessment, 10 minutes. For the percentage, presentation of my learners, ganito. So, that's one of the, um, pwede natin ilagay para magkaroon tayo ng rating na 4. The other one is for us to list, ilista po natin lahat ng mga materials na pwede po nating gamitin. Okay? So, kung kailangan nila ng paper, so ilista po natin. Kung lahat ng mga materials na kailangan nila, 
ay dapat nakalista and kailangan may clear explanation po tayo. Okay? Three naman ang rating if the SLM offers materials that are comprehensive and easy to understand and use but fall short of superior for either one of the two reasons. Pwede um, the objective does include suggestions for ways to use the materials with a variety of learners or some of the core components are underdeveloped in the object. O kaya naman, hindi natin nailagay yung mga materials na kailangan ng ating mga learners or wala tayong um, clear instruction na present sa ating mga estudyante. Okay po. For a rating of 2 or limited, an object is rated limited for the utility of materials designed to support teaching if it includes a useful approach for idea to teach an important topic but fall short of is strong for either one of the two reasons. Yung una, um, nawawala yung mga mahahalagang elements ng ating discussion. Pangalawa, important elements do not function as they are intended to. And weak ang rating natin if our SLM is confusing or ang dami pong errors na makikita at ang planning or preparation po natin ay hindi po maayos o kaya hindi na preset. And zero or not useful, simply not useful po yung ating SLMs pag gano'n. Okay, for criteria six, assessment. Okay, quality of assessment, hindi nawawala yan kapag um, kahit sa face-to-face -face, may assessment po tayo hinagawa. So this is the property of the process of documenting and using empirical data, the knowledge, skill, attitudes, and beliefs to refine programs and improve student learning. So this part, ang assessment, it is designed for us to determine what the student know before, during, and of course, after the presentation of our SLMs. Diba? Meron po tayong pre-test, post-test, meron pa tayong mga formative assessments. Okay. Paano magkakaroon ng rating na 4? Medyo madami-dami ang indicators natin. 1. Assessment aligns clearly to the objectives. So, kailangan... Kung ano yung nasa content standard and performance standard natin, yun yung ina-assess po natin. For example, your objective is to discuss evolution and your performance task is pagawan sila ng poster, then dapat nasa assessment po natin yun. So pag dumating tayo sa assessment, go back to your objectives para alam po natin kung ano ang dapat natin i-assess and for us to know Nata nakuha ko ba or na-target ko ba yung objectives ko? Kasi baka mamaya, hindi pala. Okay. The second one, nothing is assessed that is not included in objectives. So, sakto po lamang ang ating i-assess. Kung ano yung nasa objective natin, walang labis, walang kulang. Yan lang ang i-assess natin. Third one, the most important aspects of the expectations are targeted. Four, the assessment modes used in the object require the student to demonstrate proficiency in the intended concept or skill. Ang dami pong na-discuss kanina ng unang speaker bago po ako regarding assessment modes na pwede po natin gamitin. Pero take note, kailangan na measure yung proficiency ng ating mga estudyante doon sa skill or concept na gusto po nating i-evaluate sa ating mga learners. So, pwede po tayong gumamit ng um, group work na assessment o kaya selected response na assessment or the long and short um, constructed response. So, yung mga yun po. And lastly, the level of difficulty is a result of the complexity of the subject area content, and performance expectations, and of the degree of cognitive demand. Okay, a rating of three will be given to you. Your SLM evaluates all the content and performance expectations, pero ang assessment mode na ginamit natin, it does not 
measure or evaluate the proficiency of the learner. So, kailangan naka-stick pa rin po tayo sa content and performance standards po natin. Okay? Two or limited. SLM assesses some of the content or performance expectations, pero may mga tinanggal po tayo na kailangan ma-assess natin. Okay, so again, babalik at babalik po tayo sa content and performance standard natin or sa ating objective pag tayo po ay mag-a-assess na. And one, if the SLM assessments contain significant errors. A rating of zero or not useful naman. Zero naman kung hindi maayos or hindi makakatulong yung ating um, assessment sa quality of sa ating SLMs. Okay. Ayan, criteria 7. The quality of exercises. Bakit ganun may assessment ng may exercises pa? Of course. Di po ba kahit na sa face-to-face -face tayo, madami tayong exercises na pinapresent sa ating mga learners. The availability of these practices strengthen the specific skills and knowledge. So anong gamit ng ang daming exercises? The purpose of these exercises is for us to deepen the understanding of our learners sa subject matter. So kung papansinin po ninyo yung ating mga SLMs, yung ating modules, di ba? Ang dami pong nakapresent na exercise. Kasi ito ay para ma-practice no bata yung skill na gusto natin maintindihan po niya. So yun po yun, kaya madami exercises na nakapresent. So, a rating of 4 or superior if the deposit, the object offers more exercises than the needed for the average student. So, kung, kung mas madami po tayong present na exercise kesa doon sa uh, for those average students, so 4. Another indicator is the exercises are clearly written and supported by accurate answer keys. So, Di ba sa module natin, nasa likod yung answer keys or yung key to corrections po natin. And lastly, there are a variety of exercise types. Baka naman po yung type na exercise natin ay true or false all throughout. Huwag naman. So, kailangan iba-iba yung e-present natin. Especially pag e-book na yan, madami po tayong makukuha sa book widgets. Okay, discuss na din po ng... Um, na DepEd EdTech yung book widgets before. So, madami tayong makukuha doon. No? Pwede po natin gamitin. And those are very interactive. Next, a rating of 3 or strong. SLM offers only a sufficient number of well-written exercises to facilitate mastery of targeted skills. So, ibig sabihin, enough. Sakto lang yung nating exercises sa ating mga learners. Okay, a rating of 2 or limited. SLM has some, but too few exercises to facilitate the mastery of the targeted skills. Tapos nakalimutan nyo nilagay yung inyong answer keys. Okay, a rating of 1. If the exercises provided do not facilitate the mastery of the targeted Skill. So, babalik at babalik pa rin po tayo pag gumawa tayo ng exercises sa ating objectives. And lastly, there are errors in our SLMs in terms of exercises. And last criteria, the opportunities for deeper learning. So, I know we are familiar sa 4Cs natin. So, this part, the potential of the SLM to develop the following. Think critically and solve complex problems. So, kailangan sa SLM natin develop ang critical thinking skills and problem-solving skills ng ating mga estudyante. Next, work collaboratively and communicate effectively. So, in this one, kailangan no, pa-practice ang collaboration and communication skills ng ating learners. Construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. And of course, apply discrete knowledge and skills to real-world situations. Ito yung paborito ko sa SLM. Dapat may tinatawag tayong transfer of learning. 
hindi lang po puro content yung tinuturo natin, kundi magagamit din nila yun sa real world situations. Okay, so a rating of four if the following indicators are met. Number one, at least three of the deeper learning skills from the list are required in the object. Second, the object offers a range of cognitive demand and appropriate scaffolding and direction are provided. And dyan ulit yung pagbibigay natin ng guidance sa ating mga learners. So a rating of three or strong, if the SLM includes one or two deeper learning skills identified in this rubric, two naman kapag isa lang doon sa mga limang nabanggit kanina ang uh, natakal natin. One, if it appears to be designed to provide some of the deeper learning opportunities identified in this rubric. And zero, if it is not useful. So again, yun po yung ating walong criteria na dapat e-consider pag gumawa tayo ng SLM at gusto natin siyang i-convert sa ebook. So with that, thank you so much and God bless po. So again, I am Teacher Minerva from SDO Pangasinan 2. So let me share to you the quote, the quote of Brian Herbert, the capacity to learn is a gift, the ability to learn is a skill, and the willingness to learn is a choice. So nasa atin po kung gusto nating matuto. So with that, thank you so much po sa ating lahat.